Cholera, a disease that most people are familiar with only in textbooks, is still affecting the Caribbean nation of Haiti. To date, at least 7,200 Haitians have died from cholera, and more than half a million people have been infected. In a documentary titled Baseball in the Time of Cholera, the filmmakers chronicle the life of Joseph, a boy who falls in love with the game of baseball and becomes the captain of Haiti's first Little League team. This story unravels simultaneously as cholera ravages the country. And those two stories converge for us uh, on, on a really tragic day when the mother of, of, of our captain, the Little League baseball team's captain, Joseph, when his mother died tragically from cholera. And at that moment, it really hit us hard. It sent shockwaves through our households uh, because they were really family to us. His mother worked closely with my wife on a jewelry project. And Joseph was like our little brother. And so for the first time since the outbreak of cholera, it was about 10 months after cholera first emerged, that this happened. Um, when that happened, we realized how much of a scandal and a tragedy that this, this outbreak was. Uh, for, for, for Haiti, that the United Nations was responsible, but they weren't owning up to that. They weren't taking responsibility, and people were dying all around us while the perpetrators uh, of this man-made disaster were, were denying responsibility. Why they don't detect the cholera on the uh, Nepalese soldiers? How they don't treat the, 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 you know, the waste? They need to say, it's, um, it's my fault. My father called me and said, Joseph, your, father, your mother of cholera, I go to see her. She was very good. Then, The film was screened on Capitol Hill on July 18th in hopes of calling more attention to the issue. It certainly got the attention of Democratic representative and ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, John Conyers Jr. The congressman, along with 103 other members of Congress, submitted a letter to the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Susan Rice. The letter holds the U.N. responsible for the epidemic and calls them to act decisively to control its spread. Manusa's $800 million budget is largely decided on here, on Capitol Hill. That's why activists have decided to take their fight to Washington, since the U.N. has yet to officially take any responsibility for spreading cholera in Haiti. There have been numerous investigations suggesting that the U.N. is culpable, and even former president to the United States, Bill Clinton, has said that the U.N. is the proximate cause of the cholera outbreak. Uh, when I speak to both member nation diplomats, as well as some of the staff in the United Nations headquarters in New York, as well as in Port-au-Prince, is that when you talk to individuals, they actually realize this. They've read the science, they've read the reports, both the published reports as well as their own unpublished uh, report by the UN co-authors, which are all in agreement, essentially, of what the cause was. Dr. Rishi Rattan was on the ground when the cholera epidemic hit Haiti first in October of 2010. Haitian authorities recorded 2,000 deaths in the first 30 days, but never in recorded history had the country faced a cholera epidemic. Then where did it come from? Several scientific studies, including a June 2011 report by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, say U.N. troops were the likely cause of the outbreak. DNA testing has shown that the cholera strain in Haiti is so close to the strain active in Nepal that the U.N.'s own independent report called the strains a, quote, perfect match. The report also stated that the sewage piping at the Nepalese base was, quote, haphazard and inadequate, and the base dumped its waste into an unfenced pit. Most people are asymptomatic and they're infectious, uh, again, over 75 percent, particularly in endemic areas like Nepal. So uh, what's more likely is that three bases worth of Nepali soldiers, which amounts to thousands of soldiers, uh, were defecating to the lower trains. And yes, while that was spilling out, it's Again, this is all conjecture uh, because we don't have the proof, but I suspect that these were being collected in the septic tanks and all three bases were being trucked to those septic tanks that then leached into the river. Um, uh, and it was asymptomatic, but it was a large enough volume of, of low concentration bacteria that it uh, infected people. Close to proof as you're going to get. And unfortunately, we can't get any closer because as Jonathan alluded to, the proof that we need is testing of the Nepalese soldiers and the contaminated waters, which the UN prevented. 
looking for justice for the cholera victims, director of the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti, Brian Concanon, filed a lawsuit against the United Nations on behalf of 5,000 victims of cholera. They are calling for the UN to provide clean water and sanitation infrastructure, a public apology, and $100,000 in compensation for victims who have lost family members. But this is no easy case. There is no legal precedent of a case like this against the UN, and MINUSTA is governed by a Status of Forces Agreement, or SOFA. This means they have broad immunities from civil or criminal actions in Haitian court. Concanon explained that the Haitian government is in a precarious position to pressure the UN to face justice. But on an official public level, it's very difficult for the, for the Haitian government to make those concerns public. Uh, they depend on the UN for funding, for security, for a lot of things. And so far, and, and in terms of the executive branch, there has not been any public um, denunciations of the UN or public statements calling for the UN to respond justly. About 5% of Haitians have already caught cholera and the numbers are expected to rise in the coming years. Dr. Rattan said that a disease that is essentially treated with sugar water and a bit of salt has no place in modern medicine and to truly cure Haiti of cholera will take an investment in Haiti's water supply. MINUSTA, uh, the UN military mission, which has a mandate to actually improve water security uh, as a sort of a general mandate to improve living conditions uh, and secure human rights uh, for Haitians, have been there the entire time that the water security has gotten worse. And so clearly have, at least in that portion of their mandate, failed uh, to secure water security and water infrastructure for Haitians. But if you redistribute that water to programs that are willing to partner with the government of Haiti and work on water infrastructure, then we can have that solution. The money is there. It, even in this economic downturn, the money is there. The answers are there. We have the answer. We have the money. We have Haitians asking for water and, uh, you know, asking for clean water that they can run that won't kill their family members. What are we missing? We're missing the UN motivation. And that's where I think U.S. Congress comes into play. For the Real News Network, Jessica Devereaux, Washington.